Hey, this is George back with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast helping new hunters get started and helping active hunters learn new things. Today we're going to do something I've been looking forward to for a while. We are going to test steel shot versus copper plated bismuth shot. Now I'll give just a quick backstory on this. I did an entire podcast episode on it, so I'm not going to go in depth here. But essentially a number of years back they told us we couldn't hunt waterfowl and in some states anything else using lead shot because of toxicity issues. So they went with steel shot because it was the least expensive option. But steel is much less dense than lead and it was a much less effective shot to use for taking birds and pretty much anything else. So the way that this shakes out is uh, steel is denser, or excuse me, steel is less dense than lead shot. So you're going to have less energy even for the same size shot because it has less weight, less density, and you know even at even at the muzzle, steel shot is going to have less power even with the same velocity. So it delivers less impact. The other issue that it has is steel shot loses speed faster when exposed to wind or any other medium because it has less density. So not only does it start with less power, the further it goes, the slower it gets, and then when it hits at slower speeds, it has even less power still. The exaggerated examples, think about it like a baseball versus a wiffle ball. If someone threw a baseball at you as hard as they could, that sucker could hurt. It could do some real damage depending on where it hits you. If they threw a wiffle ball as hard as they could and it hits you at the exact same speed, it would do nowhere near the damage. It might sting a little bit, but it's not going to have anywhere close to the same effect as a baseball. The other side, you could throw a baseball 100 yards if you're really good and you're in shape and you know what you're doing. If you try to throw a wiffle ball 100 yards, well, you can't. Nobody can because it's so light, it has so little density, despite being the same size, it just is not able to, to fight through the wind to go that far. And even if it did, it wouldn't hit hard enough to even mention. Now that's a very exaggerated example, but that's essentially what we're looking at today. Now for this test, we're gonna go with this particular steel shot right here. This is Peter's Premier Blue High Velocity Steel Shot made by Remington. This stuff is 12 gauge, three inch, 1400 feet per second, one and a quarter ounce number four shot. And we're gonna test this against Boss Unmuzzled Copper Plated Bismuth. This again is 12 gauge, three inch, number four shot, 1,350 feet per second, and then one and three eighths ounce load. So this is 50 feet per second slower, but it is a half ounce more of shot. Now the reason we're testing these two is, uh, there's several reasons behind it actually. Number one, this is what I could find. This is what's available in today's market. So scientifically, it is not an exact apples to apples comparison, but in terms of being realistic, it's an excellent comparison because you just can't find whatever you want today. So you gotta compare what you can get with what else you can get. The other piece of it is, because bismuth is denser, it has more weight for the same volume, so you much more rarely have the same powder charge, the same velocity, and the same overall weight uh, of the shot because the same number of pellets take up, or, or way more rather. So it's hard to do an apples to apples even still. So what we're gonna do is a ballistics gel test. We're gonna see which one of these penetrates deeper into the ballistics gel. But before that, we're gonna do a little bit of patterning because the bismuth is supposed to pattern better because it's copper plated. One of the reasons I went with Boss is because they have this proprietary copper plating process that they do which is supposed to do several things. Number one, it's supposed to make the, the shot a little bit more uniform, so it should have a better grouping. It's supposed to uh, help cut back on fragmentation because bismuth is a little bit more dense than steel and other metals. It's also supposed to make the, the shot a little bit smoother, so it should actually carry through the air and the intended target, potentially with less resistance and able to penetrate more. And no, of course you're wondering, neither one of these companies is sponsoring this video. Video. Now, I'm not affiliated with either one. Nobody sent me any free ammo. I bought all this with my own money to come out here and test for you guys and for myself to figure out which one's going to be better. For today's test, we're going to be using this Mossberg 930. Semi-automatic waterfowl shotgun, 28 inch barrel, going to be using a modified choke tube. I should mention Boss recommends you actually use an even tighter choke tube than usual, but I want to do this apples for apples for how I'm used to hunting and I usually use a modified choke tube. 
So we're gonna see how this does. All right, now we're back at 30 yards and we've got the Peters again on the right. For those of you who notice, the Peters is blue. I actually like the blue color. Blue lets me know it's for waterfowl. So if I get a bunch of shells at the bottom of my bag, which has happened, they know exactly which that it's for. And next we will do the boss. We do have an interesting observation with the boss. It actually smells better than the Remington. Not sure how that helps. I'd rather it be blue, but the smell is nice. Let's go see how we did. All right, guys, we're looking at the Peters Remington. So we had a pretty good number of, of pellets on here, a little heavier over there maybe, and up here. Uh, we had 133 pellets on this one. All right, now we are looking at the boss. This one actually seems to me to have a more uniform distribution, um, slightly. This one had 159 pellets in the circle at 30 yards. All right, now we're at 40 yards, and we're gonna take our shot on the right with the Peters. And now our shot on the left with the boss. All right, now we're up for the moment of truth. We've got the Peters on the ballistics gel at 40 yards. Let's see what we did. All right, guys, looks like we've got, we just measured this. We've got one, two, three, four pellets in there. Our best one was two and one eighth inch. And the other ones were just under two. So let's see what we do with the good stuff. All right, now we're up with the boss at 40 yards against the ballistics gel. We're shooting the same piece of gel. We just turned it around, wanted to eliminate every variable possible. All right, let's take a look. All right, guys, this result here is pretty cool. Check this out. Our boss shells got us to three, there's one right here, got us to three and three eighths inches of penetration. Three and three eighths versus two and one eighth. And then if you take a look at it, even the average, the mean penetration Our mean penetration here is probably right around three inches. So we were right around three inches of mean penetration where we were probably right around just under two inches for the other one. All right, guys, we ran a few more tests off camera just so we were able to get some good averages. So we repeated our test with the ballistic gel, with the boss, and with the Peters. We shot another piece of gel, two shots in the both sides. We started on the reverse side in order to account for any variables. We also did a test with some Winchester goose loads, number two shot, one ounce loads. So high power, faster loads, bigger shot, just to see how we compare. And guys, the results here, I think, really speak for themselves. So we did our two tests. Our boss average depth, we averaged every one of the shots inside each block. So the first test, all the pellets for one, all the pellets for the other. Boss had 3.04 inches of penetration versus Peters at two inches. The second test, boss had 2.38 inches. Peters had 1.93. And we averaged the total pellet counts as well. And boss averaged uh, 2.75, that's not the average of these two numbers, that's the average of all the pellets averaged together. 2.75 versus 1.96. Now our Winchester goose load, here we had 2.75 and then 2.65. So our average penetration for the number two shot goose loads that were traveling faster, steel again, was 2.45. So what does that shake out to be? Well at 40 yards, the boss had 40% more power, more penetration in the ballistics gel than the Peters did. And still 12% more penetration than the number two loads, which were traveling even faster. So this is going 150 feet per second faster than the boss at the muzzle. And it's number two, number two shot, which is larger than the number four shot. 
and Boss still outperformed both of them. When it came to pattern testing, at 40 yards, Boss had 136 pellets in the circle, Peters had 81. At 30 yards, we had 159, Peters had 133. So we had 68% uh, better pattern at 40 yards and then 20% better pattern at 30 yards. And I would expect that at a shorter distance, you know, things perform better. At 20 yards, pretty much everything works equally effectively. But the further out you get with the boss loads, the, the more power you've got and the better pattern you have. So, and we did not test the Winchester goose loads on paper. We ran out of paper, uh, so we weren't able to do that one. So what is the verdict? Well, guys, I think the boss is performing significantly better. At 40 yards, you've got 40% better penetration, and you've got 68% better pattern. So, uh, you know, again, this one, I, I think boss wins. You may, your test may turn out a little bit differently, but like I said, we shot multiple shots in these rounds. We did multiple rounds, multiple pieces of gel, each side, we flipped them and varied them to try to account for every variable possible. So make sure you guys give a thumbs up to this video, subscribe. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this test? Obviously, it's not a perfect test. It's hard to be perfect. How do you think it went? Are you convinced? How could we do better? We could always run this again in the future. So till next time, I appreciate you guys. God bless you and go get them in the woods. Hey, so I forgot to mention the cost factor when it comes to these two ammunitions. The Peters ammo, when I bought it, I paid $15 for a box of 25, which I think equates to about 60 cents a round for the steel ammo. For the Boss Bismuth shells, I think I bought it for about $28 for a box of 20 when I got it. So that comes out to be about a dollar 40 a round if I did my math right. So the Boss is significantly more expensive than the Peters ammo. So what do you do with that? How's a new hunter juggle that? Maybe you want the increased performance, is it worth it? Well, you gotta ask yourself the question, how much do you plan to shoot in a given season? My first season, I went through one box of 25 rounds of steel. So if you're gonna say, well, I'm gonna spend $15 for the year, or $30 for the year on shells, to me, that's not a big deal. If you're gonna go through one box for the entire year, that is no biggie. Now, if you're gonna go through a case for the year, then it becomes a much bigger equation. So one of the ways I hunt crows, which I think applies a lot to this, might help you guys. When I go crow hunting, I go out, I like to put three, three inch magnum rounds in my shotgun and then bring with me a box of two and three quarter inch target loads. And my thought is this, I don't know how many shots I'm gonna get in a given day. I don't know if I'm gonna get one shot or two shots. So if I only get a couple shots, I want those few shots to count. I wanna have the best chance I can of dropping a crow or two. But I might get 10 or 20 or 30 shots in a day. So the idea is I want those first three shots to count in case I only get a few shots, and then I switch right over to the cheap ammo because that means I've already gotten a bunch of shots, I'm having a good day, I'm okay with using the cheap ammo for those opportunities. So you might want to approach duck hunting the same way, or maybe you just want to start the season with a box of the expensive stuff, and if you shoot through all that and you need more, that means you're having a pretty good season, you've got a bunch of ducks, and you're okay with switching over to the cheap stuff. So that's a couple different ways to handle it. You know, you're the only one that knows your financial situation and what works good for you. So hope that helps. Catch you guys next time.